I mean, the acceleration and the speed at which you fly immediately, like you're, you're just dancing. It felt like snowboarding through powder or like, you know, uh, it, was, it was really good. It's unbelievable. Wow! In the 1880s, the first automobile was developed, and about two decades later, the Wright brothers in North Carolina invented the first successful airplane. For more than 100 years humans have dreamed of combining those two concepts. The flying car. A personal vertical takeoff and landing aircraft able to give you the freedom of flying on a day-to-day -day basis. In recent years, Converging technologies and improvements in batteries, electric motors, controllers, and carbon fiber technology have reached a point where they have the potential to revolutionize air travel. A new crop of aviation engineers is designing vehicles for all kinds of sky-based transportation under the umbrella of the new urban air mobility industry, estimated to generate a market valued at $115 billion by 2035. Big companies currently have flying prototypes and are getting closer to pass regulations and get their aircraft certified. But there is a problem. Many of these companies have opted to operate a passenger urban air mobility business model and not only be manufacturers, which means that they won't be selling their products to regular people. Moreover, even if you are one of the lucky few allowed to buy one for personal use, the prices of all of them are out of reach for most of us. Working in the basement of his house, near Warkworth, Ontario in Canada, a mechanical engineer had an idea that could bring the flying car to the masses. The first aircraft uh, was built in the, the basement of my home, just outside of Fort Worth. Um, we really didn't give it a name because it was just a proof of concept vehicle. And uh, it was made with uh, very simple materials, uh, uh, styrofoam from Home Depot and carbon composite uh, that was purchased uh, from a boat uh, supply uh, outfit and um, bamboo chopsticks to basically hold the wings onto the fuselage. Um, the motors were off the shelf um, and they were heavily modified uh, for the vehicle because they didn't have the performance requirement uh, to actually make the vehicle functional. The batteries were uh, purchased in the United States. They were very expensive at that time. Um, and the control system was uh, designed and built by myself and uh, programmed by myself as well. We basically spent a couple weeks uh, tuning the aircraft uh, while it was uh, locked in place uh, on a trailer. And uh, once we got the tuning set, uh, we then began doing <clears throat> manned flights uh, to do further testing. And then on October 5th of 2011, we conducted our first uh, manned flight. And uh, uh, the results of that were um, excellent controllability and the very first aircraft had no redundancy of any sort, so it was a relatively high risky aircraft to fly, so we didn't really fly very high above the ground, basically a little bit over a meter. And uh, at the end of that flight, the proof of concept was proven, so that aircraft was retired at that point. On October 5th of 2011, history quietly was made. That day saw the first manned flight of a fixed, wing all-electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. This event prompted the formation of a stealth company with the sole purpose of pursuing the development of this new unique technology. And in October of 2017, the last version of Black Fly flew for the first time.
The Black Fly is a single-seat, electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle with fixed tandem wings and fully electric propulsion. It is classified as ultralight in the US and basic ultralight in Canada. The Black Fly can land in grass, asphalt, snow, ice, and it also has amphibious capabilities. With an epoxy impregnated carbon fiber structure of 4.17 meters wide, 4.11 meters long, and 1.52 meters high. Weighing 155 kilograms, is capable of 40 kilometers of range for the US version and 64 kilometers of range for the international version. Generating a maximum of 436 kilograms of static thrust, the Black Fly can reach a cruise speed of more than 128 kilometers per hour. It is considered that the Black Fly, in mass production, will have a price similar to an SUV vehicle. To fly a Black Fly it is not needed a pilot's license in the US but Opener requires that all operators successfully complete the company-mandated vehicle familiarization and operator training. Unfortunately for investors, Opener is a well-funded private company and will not be seeking new investors for the foreseeable future. Opener's Black Fly signals a new era of aviation, time and money spent traveling and maintaining infrastructure will be reduced. People will go places they never thought possible.